Oh boy. Deadly Legend is a movie that is going to be on video on demand. I got, I actually got a screener for this movie, so I got to see it a few days early. And now that the embargo has lifted, I can finally talk about a Deadly Legend. A real estate developer named Joan buys an old summer camp. However, the property has a dark history of supernatural worship and human sacrifice. But when construction workers uncover a deadly secret on the ground, supernatural and mythical spirits from the Stonehenge era appear and start to terrorize the people of this construction site in this town. So, A Deadly Legend. This movie is brilliant, and it's brilliant at one thing, uh, being bad. This movie feels like the project of a high school dropout who was, like, turning in his midterm, like, incomplete, and was just like, all right, peace out, bye. Problem is, it's not that. This is an attempt by professionals to make an actual movie, but they fail epically. This entire movie doesn't even look like it's filmed on an actual movie camera. It looks like it's filmed in its entirety on a GoPro. Not to mention the acting is atrocious. The dialogue is atrocious. Like, hey, look at this. We got beer. Every five seconds, the word beer is mentioned. And the characters in this movie, there's nothing to them. And you have some actually well-known actors in this movie. Lori Petty's in this movie, and I'll come back around to her in a minute. Uh, Corbin Burnson, you might know him as Roger Dorn from Major League. Judd Hirsch? I don't know what the hell he's doing in this movie. But here's, here's the funny part. None of these characters are fleshed out. There's there to be cardboard cutouts. You can easily use a box cutter and cut them in half. That's what they are, but man, <laughs> Lori Petty's character, Wanda, that was something. That might be my favorite character of the year because her entire character consists of this. She likes beer, she talks about beer, she drinks beer, and she steals an entire cooler full of beer. This movie has gone completely insane. Not only has this movie lost its mind, but its body and its soul. Of course, all these actors know that they're just getting a decent paycheck from this movie, which by the way is low budgeted, so I understand where the constraints in terms of the filmmaking are coming from, but even as a low budget movie, I haven't I haven't seen anything this bad. This is just awful. So they're obviously collecting their own paychecks. You can tell they give zero shits about making this movie good. It's just one of those movies that these actors needed to like pay their rent or pay their bills because they slowly faded out of the mainstream. Like I said, this movie is very low budgeted. You can tell it definitely has some budget constraints, but that doesn't take away from the fact that it doesn't feel like a movie. Even a smaller scale, low budgeted horror movie can do a lot. This movie does nothing. It's not even that scary. It's the most generic of jump scares. Somebody quickly passing by the camera, somebody tapping somebody on the shoulder. Th that's your level of scare here. And the big giant entity is this girl dressed in all white that has like eyeliner that's smeared down her face because it looks like rain like ruined her mascara. That's their attempt at being scary. I, I was pretty scared, honestly. I ran out of the living room. I hid under my bed. I had to turn the lights on. Within the first 20 minutes of this movie, there are 13, count them, 13 fade to blacks as scene transitions, and I would say 98% of this movie is fade to blacks for scene transitions. That's not how you transition from scene to scene. You can easily, you can easily cut two scenes right after each other instead of having a scene transition. Transition into the next scene. You can, you can do a cross dissolve. This movie attempts to do that a couple times, but this movie is so obsessed with transitioning from scene to scene with Fade to Blacks that it's like, oh hey, look, we're new and edgy. It's like an invented Fade to Black. Look, as I said before, I understand that this is a very low budget horror movie, but you gotta at least have enough funding to film on location 
not film in front of a giant green screen and have your exposure look all wonky. It was very noticeable. Like, it took me so far out of the movie. It gave me a couple of chuckles. In all honesty, if I had all of the clips to this movie, if I had a bunch of footage to this movie, I would have just roasted this thing up because that's how bad this movie is. Unfortunately, I don't. I can't download it, so I can't roast it. This movie also falls into the trap of too much exposition. It tries to explain everything to you because because it thinks the audience is dumb and can't figure it out for itself, and it thinks its characters are dumb and can't figure it out for themselves. And the more it explains to you, the more it makes less and less sense as it goes on. It is one of the most convoluted things you have ever seen in a horror movie. It just contradicts itself with its lore and what the rules are with this entity and they try and do some like flashbacks that obviously is going to be connected to like the present day and it has one of the most generic and definitely least shocking plot twists of all time like you see it coming from 13 countries away it's generic and by the way what a shit ending in all honesty there were parts of this movie that had me laughing it was mostly the parts with Wanda and her wanting beer and stealing that beer cooler. So a lot of the dialogue just had me chuckling. I, I, I don't know what the demographic for this movie was either. They cut away when there were violent acts being committed, but then there were other times where they weren't. You actually saw some blood splatter. It didn't make sense as to how this movie was edited. It thinks it invented fade to blacks as scene transitions. This is, in all honesty, from a filmmaking standpoint, this is an F. This is this movie belongs in popcorn hell. But if you were with me last night when I was watching this movie, I found it entertaining in all the wrong ways possible. This is one of the best unintentional comedies I have seen in a while. Filmmaking standpoint, it belongs in popcorn hell. From an entertaining standpoint, I would say it's worth the full bucket of buttery popcorn. Watch this with a group of friends. Make fun of it. It's definitely worth it. It's definitely worth trying to dissect this movie. Apparently, this was probably going to be released to festivals. I have no idea how because it doesn't even feel like it's finished. But it's, but it's entertaining in that unintentional comedic type of way. So I'll give the movie that. But <laughs> please, this is by far the worst movie I've seen this year. But I'm not gonna lie when I say I was mildly entertained by some of the unintentional comedy that's placed throughout this movie. So guys, I will have a lot more reviews coming. I got some screeners for some movies that have been, either been delayed or are supposed to be coming out. Palm Springs, St. Maude. Hoping to get that new Charlize Theron movie as well. You guys are the best. Stay tuned for those very soon. I will leave my link to my website in the description below. My name is Alex Madden, and I'll see you at the movies somewhere.